Hello, friend. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. This is Pastor Pitts Evans. On this podcast, we read and discuss one chapter of God's Word per episode. Let's go now to the Bible and see what the Lord has for us today. Luke chapter 14. One Sabbath, when Jesus went to eat in the house of a prominent Pharisee, he was being carefully watched. There in front of him was a man suffering from abnormal swelling of his body. Jesus asked the Pharisees and experts in the law, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? But they remained silent. So, taking hold of the man, he healed him and sent him on his way. Then he asked them, If one of you has a child or an ox that falls into a well on the Sabbath day, will you not immediately pull it out? And they had nothing to say. When he noticed how the guests picked the places of honor at the table, he told them this parable. When someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor, for a person more distinguished than you may have been invited. If so, the host who invited both of you will come and say to you, Give this person your seat. Then, humiliated, you will have to take the least important place. But when you're invited, Take the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he will say to you, Friend, move up to a better place. Then you will be honored in the presence of all the other guests, for all of those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Then Jesus said to his host, When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends, your brothers or sisters, your relatives or your rich neighbors. If you do, they may invite you back, and so you will be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. When one of those at the table with him heard this, he said to Jesus, Blessed is the one who who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. Jesus replied, A certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servants to tell those who had been invited, Come, for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said, I have just bought a field, and I must go and see to it. Please excuse me. And another one said, I have just bought five yoke of oxen, and I'm on my way to try them out. Please excuse me as well. Still another said, I just got married, so I can't come either. The servant came back and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry and ordered his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town, and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. Sir, the servant said, What you ordered has been done, but there is still room. Then the master told his servant, Go out to the roads and country lanes and compel them to come in, so that my house will be full. I tell you, not one of those who were invited will get a taste of my banquet. Large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and turning to them, he said, If anyone comes to me and does not hate father, mother, wife, children, brothers, and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? For if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule you, saying, This person began to build, but wasn't able to finish. Or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Won't he first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000? If he's not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still a long ways off and will ask for terms of peace. In the same way, those of you who do not give up everything you have cannot be my disciples." Salt is good, but if it loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is fit neither for the soil nor for the manure pile. It's only thrown out. Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear.
This chapter takes place in the setting of a meal at one of the homes of the Pharisees. And the Pharisees were there. The teachers of the law were there. Tax collectors and sinners were there. They were all gathered around to hear Jesus. And Jesus had a lot to say. And uh, he begins to talk about humility in verse 7. It says, when he noticed how the guest picked the places of honor at the table, he told them this parable. So he was observing the different ones that were jockeying to position at the table at this meal. In verse 8, he said, When someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor. For a person more distinguished than you may have been invited. If so, the host who invited both of you will come and say to you, Give this person your seat. Then, humiliated, you will have to take the least important place. But when you're invited, take the lowest place. So that when your host comes, he will say to you, friend, move up to a better place. Then you will be honored in the presence of all the other guests. And then the point is, verse 11, for all of those who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. And I can tell you, my friends, that this is me speaking, not Jesus. I've seen people who attempted to promote themselves and to position themselves in places of honor. And then those very same people be humiliated when someone who was more noteworthy than them came along. They were required literally to get up and give up their place and um, give it to someone who was more important and better. And so the point that Jesus was trying to make was that you should always approach every situation with humility. Jesus himself came with humility. He was humble and lowly. He was not self-promoting and so forth. He said that those who promote themselves will be humbled but those who humble themselves will be exalted. So the way of the kingdom of God is to go with humility. It's always to go with humility and not with self-promotion. Those who humble themselves will be given places of honor in the kingdom of God. He continues in this chapter to give various instructions to those that were at the table. And he comments in verse 25 on the cost of following him. He said, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. Now, what he was saying was not that we literally would despise our family, but we would recognize that our allegiance to Jesus is higher than our allegiance to our own families, even to our mother, father, wife, children, and so forth. When my own children were born, they had a difficult time understanding that I loved their mother, but I loved God more than their mother. And then by extension, I loved my children, but I loved God more than my own children. And that's what the scripture teaches, not that we would literally hate our family members, but that we would prefer Jesus and the will of Jesus to our own family and the will of our own family. And so our allegiance as believers must be first and foremost to Christ. If you're going to be a follower of Christ, he's got to be number one in your life. After Jesus, your family, after your family, your work, and so forth. And people get their lives out of kilter. Some people put their allegiance to their work, to their family, but your primary allegiance must be to Christ and following Christ. He goes on in verse 27 to say, and whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. And so what does he mean by carry your cross? He means that where your will conflicts with his will, you submit to his will. Or put another way, You're not being obedient to God if you are already heading in the direction that you're heading anyway. It's when your will conflicts with the will of God that you submit to the cross and you do it his way and not your way. And so this idea of carrying your cross is submitting to the Lordship of Christ. You give up the right to the lordship of your own life, and you give it to Jesus. And Jesus says, this is part of the cost of following him. If you're going to be a real disciple of Christ, he's going to be your savior, but he's also going to be your Lord. And as Lord, he determines where you go, what you do, what you say, and so forth. He goes on to talk about the cost of being a disciple in verse 28. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it. And so he's suggesting to those that are listening to him, and by extension, those of you that are listening to me today, before you decide to follow Jesus, consider the cost. 
Because, yes, there is life, there's peace, there's joy, there's a future, there's hope, there's healing, there's grace, there's all of those things. But there's also a cost. You relinquish the rights to your own life. I don't get to decide where I want to live as a Christian. The Lord Jesus Christ will direct me to where he would have me to live. I don't get to decide who my friends are going to be. He decides who my friends are going to be. I don't get to decide what types of entertainment I'm going to have and the various aspects of your life that other people have the right to choose. We relinquish those rights to Christ. And so we live by the principles of the scriptures. We live by the leading of the still small voice of Jesus. We live by the leading of the Holy Spirit. But we relinquish the rights to our own lives. And Jesus is encouraging the people that heard him then and the people that hear me now to count the cost. Before you say, I'm going to be a Christian or I'm going to be a follower of Christ, you need to recognize what it means. In verse 33, he says, in the same way, those of you who do not give up everything you have cannot be my disciples. And he's talking about the rights to everything you have. So will Jesus make you give all of your possessions to the poor? Probably not, but he might. And if he requires that of you, that's what you must do. Will Jesus make you go to a country where it's in threat of your life to be a Christian? Probably not, but he might. And if he does, that's part of the cost of being a disciple. The early disciples recognized that they were relinquishing their own lives to the leadership of God. In our generation, we should do no less. And so, Lord, As we count the cost to follow Jesus, we recognize that it's worth the cost, but Lord, reinstill in us a sense of relinquishing the rights to our own lives. Lord, may we really and truly make Jesus Lord. We want to exalt Jesus. We want to humble ourselves and exalt the Lord Jesus in everything we say and do. Lord, may we willingly submit. Lord, may we love you above everything else in this life, including father, mother, wife, and children. May you be first. May you be number one in every aspect of our lives. Lord, we love you. We submit to you with love. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.